So this is uh, uh, our fourth lecture uh, on the spacecraft propulsion course. So uh, we can continue from the last lecture. So in our previous lecture, uh, actually we have tried to cover uh, a very vast portion of most theoretical aspects related to space, atmosphere, universe, and so on. And also uh, we started to identify different kinds of, even the historical perspective of uh, uh, aerospace propulsion, uh, how it started, when it is, it is started, by whom uh, the first moon landing occurred, and how the space station concepts are also developed and initiated. So this all have been uh, done in the last uh, lectures. So just to summarize yesterday's lecture, I will take some uh, summary uh, problem that helps us to understand what we have learned yesterday. Uh, because um, we tried to cover some gravitational attraction in between uh, some planets, okay? So that, let's summarize that. This is not a problem, but just a summary. So let's do the problem of space probe by uh, named uh, Rosta. This is the name of the spacecraft that was launched to study the asteroid in the uh, space between Mars and the Jupiter. So this particular uh, space capsule was uh, with mass of 500 kg uh, uh, was used to study particular asteroids that is named uh, Sutins is one of the asteroids uh, for this mission. So the mass of this uh, asteroid is 1.208 times 10 to the power of uh, 11 kilogram. And the diameter of asteroid is taken uh, 1,200 kilometer. And the distance between the capsule and the asteroid is considered the 800. So I tried to picture all the uh, matter here, you can see here. So what is the attraction force uh, that exerts between Sutan asteroid and on the uh, space capsule, uh, Rosita? So that is the question. <clears throat> so what we have given are the distance between asteroid and uh, the uh, uh, space capsule is 800 given. Uh, so we have, when we compare the space capsule in relation to the asteroid dimension, uh, it is very small. Uh, we can neglect the diameter of the space capsule because that small diameter will have neglect, uh, negligible effect. Uh, mass of uh, uh, the space capsule is 500 kg. Again, diameter of this uh, uh, asteroid is 1,200 mass is given. So what is the distance from center to center is uh, that is 800 plus half of the diameter of this thing, 600. So which gives 1,400 kilometer. So what we are uh, going to find is uh, the force of attraction. So in from yesterday's discussion, the universal gravitational attraction law states that all massive planets or the planets with uh, big size are attracting the smaller one. So the smaller one is attracted by the bigger one. So that is uh, because of the uh, gravitational field that developed uh, around the planet. So what are those gravitational fields? We can see uh, them, uh, we can revise them uh, soon now. So when we come to uh, the solution, force of attraction in between two masses, which is G times M, a smaller mass M, times a bigger mass uh, capital M over R square. This is uh, from universal gravitational attraction law that developed by Newton. And when Newton uh, developed this formula, uh, his, um, this formula development is based on his observation, especially from the Kepler's law. He got some idea and he also observed the other uh, things like uh, different, different uh, phenomeno phenomenological aspects are there. So this formula is developed in phenomenological aspects. It is not uh, uh, 
experimental uh, experimentally obtained formula so that means this formula may not work for some aspects especially like um, uh, some uh, asteroids which are moving in the speed of light not asteroid but there are some very small objects like quasars we call that the mass quasars quasars means quasi uh, stars quasi means kind of uh, stars with very negligible mass and those quasars are moving in very fast like uh, uh, light so during that time this formula may not work okay so that it is a phenomenological formula which is based on observations so according to this formula we can substitute uh, the values as we know g is 10 to the power of 6.671 times 10 to the power of minus 11 newton meter per kilogram square and uh, uh, the mass of earth is now uh, no no not earth but currently what we are talking is the attraction between the uh, asteroids so the mass of asteroid is given and the mass of the space capsule, which is performing uh, experimental study on that is 500. So divided by uh, 14,000, uh, no, 1,400 times 10 to the power of three, or that means kilo. This is 1,000 represents for the kilometer. So all our units must be in the standard unit. So finally, what we can get is 2.056 times 10 to the power of minus nine, Newton. Look, this is very small force. That means nano force. It is 2.05 nano Newton. In nano, uh, in this space, it has an effect. But in the ground, we can consider, we cannot consider this as a force. On the earth, no one considers this as a force because this is very minute. It is nano level. So we can neglect. But in this space, it has effect that it diverts the trajectory of some planets. Uh, in most of the time, uh, uh, people send uh, some um, objects to change the direction of asteroids. Buzuk is a Santa Chukone, asteroid or a merit limit and out of look at us sever. Mendino Mizegajo, you know, space capsule, Chitokosuna, in the like. Uh, Penetrators, impact penetrators, and it's also launch it dragu na asteroid in destroy in dragu mission it dragu. Actually, load of it may yet sarraya let lick project no. So yeah, the asteroid is with very big mass, but when asteroid is targeting the Earth and come to uh, uh, crash or make some kind of disaster on the Earth, then this small uh, uh, object which launched from the ground will change the direction of asteroid to some other planet, even with a small force. So let's see, uh, it is meaningful, even if it is in nano level, it is meaningful in space. That is what I'm going to say. Okay, so is there any question on this? Yeah, I do have a question. Okay. Hmm. When something, uh, as you say, the the asteroid falls down due to the earth, it may hit the earth, but uh, to prevent this, the scientists um, provide some capsules. This mm -hmm. is too much smaller than the asteroid that falls down the, the ground. Okay. Uh, as you say before, the, the, the thing is that has a great mass attract as more than one. But here, the capsule attract the great mass, that is asteroid. How this could be? Look, in this case, uh, uh, asteroid Buzugzi, we call it the most of asteroids are having very big size. Look, uh, for example, here, even if you consider this asteroid, 12, uh, 1,200 kilometer diameter means very big diameter. Okay. Earth and Australia and the Malefno. Earth Astraulet Shimanam and Norella. Eh? And she will let what means and Earth and Australia. Very big asteroid. So 
በማንኛውም ደግሞ ከግራውንድ ላውንች የምናረጋቸው ካፕሱሎች ዳይ ካን ኖት ቢ ሰች ዲያሜትር ኦብቪስሊ ዳይ አር ስሞ ቬሪ ስሞላር ዳን ዲስ ሶ what we can do we send this uh, for direct impact most of the plans currently in the nasa as well as other space scientists doing they send the capsule which can directly hit the asteroid when the asteroid is pointing towards to the earth and if it is expected that earth is in disaster condition after some times like lamsale nezi ዳይኖሰር የተፈበት ግዜ አይነት ሁኔታዎች that is also because of asteroid you know so yeah. during that time what the scientists will do they will send that space capsule that space capsule directly go and hit direct impact face to face impact now then they once it impacted the asteroid the asteroid meter immediately change its direction orbital change yamatal it shifts the orbit and then it delays the asteroid not to come to the earth uh, understand that okay yeah, delay yeah. delay as well as directional change or orbital change yamatal so that is the aim okay it's not attraction much no no attraction this 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 type of capsules are not for attraction purpose but direct impact purpose okay, okay. Uh, attraction yemenelaw meche mesele if it is revolving around it is for example uh, in this case this space capsule is revolving around this um, uh, uh, what you call this uh, uh, asteroid so it moves around the asteroid and the state is about the asteroid basic case but on that case it directly hits the the, the asteroid itself and okay. uh, the the capsule will damage hey le rasu moto lelawon yemadan entin mission no capsule will completely damage on the space but with that amount of impact it changes the direction of the asteroid as well as create long delay in the path of asteroid to the earth that is the mission yeah so uh, another thing what is gravitational field and how uh, is it expressed uh, again uh, you may say it is acceleration due to gravity what is acceleration due to gravity buzu negroch zagal norun ichilalu units of gravity mindinno እነዚህ ነገሮች ኢዚ ናቸው but as a science uh, we have to touch all of these things so uh, and how we can get that 9.81 uh, gravitational constant 9.81 uh, lemsale uh, constantly on the earth's surface it is not constant even in the earth's surface it has a kind of parabolic distribution from the center of earth to uh, it is polar region anyways whatever we uh, most of the time for simplicity of our calculation we use 9.81 and how we can get that 9.81 uh, that is the question here so we have uh, two bodies uh, which are far apart in the distance of r and having a mass m1 and m2 so these bodies are under the gravitational attraction okay or Uh, the bigger one attracts smaller in the uh, uh, proportionality of R, uh, radius square or distance square so from that uh, also we can uh, develop uh, if you multiply r vector r and the r here uh, this r square become r cube and this uh, vector r will come uh, this is for the gravitational field actually to formulate gravitational in rn bar cancel binaregaw temsasay neger no minnagenyo okay so now in most case if the space uh, the object is in some height from the ground of the earth or on the surface of the earth so we have earth's uh, radius and then we have that height okay that height is most of the time even if we consider 100 km in the von karman uh, line that is uh, uh, earth's radius plus 100 
So then rearranging, taking the smaller, uh, smaller mass here and rearranging this, what we have? G times ME over RE squared times one over one plus H over RE, the whole square times M, this uh, mass of the object. So considering H over RE as very small number, then this part is uh, just zero, means neglig uh, negligible. So one over one is one. So we have left G M E R E square. So if you substitute values of this thing, the G values, the M E values and the R E square value, then what we can finally get is 9.81. So you can now substitute, just check. And if they check that are good, Calculator Alla Chuja Chulai? Alla Chuja. Aish. Calculator Guna Sentimental. Hen part neglect Argut. We can't one over one no consider because H over R is very small. G value is given, mass of Earth is given, radius of Earth is given. The, then you can easily calculate the G uh, gravitational constant. This is the uh, gravitational acceleration, 9.81. Check it, you can get it uh, near to this value. So that is the unit of uh, uh, G is what? Unit of Mendel? Yeah, it's in your G. Gravitational, yeah, gravitational, uh, gravitational uh, G. G means the smaller, this gravitational constant. Acceleration? Meter acceleration, that is, it is meter per second square. It is the unit of acceleration. Okay. Yeah. Nine point yeah. eight zero one nine nine. Eight zero one nine. This yeah. um, approximated to uh, yeah nine point eight. That is yeah. approximated. That is exactly at the uh, center of Earth, but it, it, it has chance to vary. You see, uh, from if you take this general formula, as H increase, uh, decrease a mark. Internal, I don't know. In red part, one considers narrow one plus H R A H value to lick your neighbor metacopor. H value to lick a mono machino. H value high. So one plus some value one over one point something. Not a lemmy metal. Yeah, yeah, let me know. Height which I'm a recruiter, many yon in a gravitational attraction. So uh, this is generally about uh, the gravitational field and the gravitational attractions. So uh, once we say this, uh, let's go to uh, today's discussion or today's lecture. So uh, at the end of uh, uh, today's lecture, uh, you will be able to know the various propulsion systems used for spacecraft application nowadays. Uh, classify the propulsion systems uh, like air breathing and non air breathing uh, propulsion systems. Identify duct jet propulsion, rocket propulsion, ramjet, and the scramjet propulsion. Now the working principle of jet engine propulsion, rocket engine propulsion, electric engine, electric propulsion, and so on. And classify the various chemical engines, nuclear engines, electrical engines, and so on. So this is the uh, objective of today's lecture. So all propulsion system, uh, in general, these propulsion systems are meant for pushing the object forward. Means what? Our basic aim is to 
push the object forward by imparting action and reaction law of the Newton's third law. Our aim is to move uh, the object forward. So the propulsion system mechanism that produce thrust to push an object forward. Trust menang bermula oleh sila trust mata kuat Allah tu. No. Hello. Isa mas, naik nak kalau. Trust mendelo, drag mendelo, lift mendelo. Yang melu nak kerucut mata kuat kau ni ya segera Allah men. Uh, most of the principal works uh, in the aircraft are also uh, works here. So, all propulsion systems are driven by engine. That is obviously known. Yet, uh, you engine type of Among uh, uh, these uh, four principal propulsion systems we have, some of uh, them are propeller driven systems. Other are turbine driven. For example, this transport aircraft is a turbine driven or jet engine. Uh, some are uh, ramjet or scramjet engines, and the others are rocket driven engines. So this is a rocket driven engine principle. As you see, uh, a massive uh, hot gas are coming out from the rocket uh, nozzle, and then the rocket is moving forward. Again, in this also, in the uh, ramjet case, you can see here a uh, lot of uh, uh, hot gas are accelerating through the uh, nozzle of the aircraft. As you can the more light aircraft, which in the propeller driven, light aircraft, which is a light now, man, you know, the like aircraft was jet engine. Now, with the current, so these are some of the uh, propulsion systems. Classification of propulsion system uh, propulsion mechanism provides force that moves body uh, that are initially at rest. Means this initially at rest means what uh, the object at rest means. Uh, V0 is equal to zero, Malet Norel. Yes. V0, initial velocity zero. That means the object is at rest. So to move an object at rest, that is one of the use. <coughs> Another case to change velocity. If, if the uh, object is in motion, and if we need to accelerate the object, we have to change the velocity. So acceleration means the rate of change of velocity. Okay, so that means uh, change of velocity or overcoming uh, retarding forces. There are many retarding forces like gravitational, uh, like the uh, air friction forces that are called the retarding forces. So uh, these are the. Uh, And then uh, we have jet propulsion systems, we have rocket propulsion systems, duct propulsion systems. We have various types of duct propulsion systems. What are these things? Well, we will see them one by one. Uh, what is a jet propulsion system? It is a means of more locomotive whereby the reaction forces is imparted to device by the momentum uh, of ejected matter. So these ejected matters are the hot gases, which come out through the uh, nozzle, okay? So uh, this jet propulsion system works in there by imparting that momentum of ejected gases. So there is reaction and action principle also. Rocket propulsion is a class of jet propulsion that produce thrust by ejecting stored matter. Now, in this case, uh, we have the stored matter that are called propellants. The propellants are stored in the form of liquid. The propellants are stored in the form of uh, solid or the combination of the two. Or there are also another means also. So it works by ejecting stored matter, okay? Again, in the similar way, those uh, stored matters are 
heated in the combustion chamber and accelerated through the nozzle with the high velocity. Okay, so that is the principle of rocket propulsion. Then the next is duct propulsion. That is also a class of jet propulsion and includes turbojets, uh, ramjets. Uh, sometimes we have a scramjet also there. And uh, the engines are also commonly called air breathing engine. In the case of duct propulsion, the engines are called air breathing engines. But in the case of rockets, they are non air breathing engines. Okay, these are non air breathing. Then air breathing uh, engines. So that propulsion device utilized surrounding medium. The difference between rocket and the duct propulsion is in duct propulsion, we use atmospheric air as a working fluid okay, to combust the fuel in the uh, chamber. But in the case of rocket, both fuel and uh, uh, both fuel and oxidizers together in a given uh, uh, proportion on the uh, based on their type. For example, in the case of solid propellant, both fuel and oxidizer together uh, merged in the same. Uh, okay, this thing will disturb us after ten minutes. Anyways, Selezi, Mandano. The solid propellant exilium, so rocket propulsion line, will have to fuel um, oxidizer um, band like cast cadargo, uh, is In the case of uh, liquid propellant rocket exilium, moment no, liquid oxidizer and liquid will have to layer each other, separate tanker will be provided for the two. Okay, so they will feed into the combustion chamber and ignite with the help of, with the help of spark igniters or some separate igniters. There are various igniter types for rockets actually. So let's even design it principally. So this is one of the jet engine type. So please look the jet engine. Maybe uh, most of you are uh, familiar, I don't know, some of you, I don't know. So jet engines are uh, a class of internal combustion engines that propel aircraft by means of uh, re, uh, re, uh, railroad discharge of jet fluid. Now the jet fluid, when the hot exhaust gas will come out through the exhaust and how they come. So look, we have air from the surrounding, which gets into uh, this region. And then there is compressors here. Okay, compressors or turbines are attached in a shaft. Okay, so then it will go to injectors here. Fuel injectors are there. And there, here there is a combustion chamber. Okay, hot, hot region or hot combustion chamber is there. And then it goes to the gas turbine. The, there are two stage turbines here, there are five stage compressors, and then it comes to uh, exhaust nozzle. So by this principle, when it comes out of exhaust nozzle, that exhaust nozzle is another narrowing section which uh, compress uh, the air and uh, move, we're moving with very fast fluids are coming out through here. So by this principle, it works. One by one, Yandan Lusilam Nacho, Vesagze, more clear on the lateral. So, this is some constructional future of the uh, jet engine system. So, if any question here, actually, we will see them one by one. Then, if, if you have even questions, that will be answered through uh, each of these things. Uh, these are various types of uh, jet engines. We have the turbo shafts that are useful for the uh, helicopter. Uh, we have uh, turbo uh, prop, which is used for, for light aircrafts. Uh, we have ultra bypass engines, again, ramjet engines, uh, high pass engine, turbo fans, uh, low pass turbo fans, 
uh, turbojet with air breathing uh, prime mover. So these are various types of uh, uh, jet engines uh, in application. So let's come to this, uh, the working principle of the previous uh, uh, figure. So jet engines consist of compressor. Look, this compressor will not be there in some of other engines. So that's why compressor at the front, then followed by the combustion chamber. Look, this is compressor, then combustion chamber and turbine, okay. The compressor and turbine are mounted on the same shaft. So the shaft connects this compressor, this uh, compressor and the turbine. A fan at the front, there are fans here. There are fan in front of here. <laughs> it is not uh, visible here, but fan is there. Uh, we can see from the previous uh, picture. Yeah, these are fans here. <coughs> Sorry. A fan at the front of the compressor sucks air from atmosphere. So a massive air from atmosphere will be sucked into compressors because the, using fans. And the compressor composed of multiple blades. You see, we have five, five stage compressor having multiple blades here, and the Z blade uh, with different shape. Uh, which are rotating at high speed on the shaft and then compress the incoming air. The pressure and temperature of uh, air increase and the speed drops. Okay, the, uh, around here, the pressure and the temperature increase uh, somewhere and then uh, speed drops as a result of this compression uh, in the compressor. Then after, in the combustion chamber, fuel is sprayed on the com uh, compressed air. So they used compressed air, because the compressor compressed on the compressed air. Then fuel uh, spray the regal. Then uh, end spark ignition flux will be initiated immediately. So that ignites the mixture. What? Fuel and? Uh, air mixture will be ignited in the combustion chamber. And the mixture expands spontaneously, uh, creating a jet, that a supersonic jet or a high speed hot gas will be produced from this combustion chamber and which is um, going through the nozzle here, the nozzle section or exhaust nozzle section with a high speed. And that produces thrust to move the vehicle forward. Okay, the amount of thrust that generated depends on the speed of the ex uh, exiting the jet in the uh, uh, comparison to the speed of the inlet air. So these jets are exited with high speed. Okay, and that high speed uh, jets results uh, momentum or the uh, forward motion of the uh, whole aircraft or all the um, uh, the moving vehicle that results the motion. So that is the principle behind of uh, jet engine. So look, uh, among the that uh, jet propulsion system is one of the uh, the type. So that is turbojet one is among them. Look how the turbojet works. Similar thing, I, I don't want to uh, repeat uh, things here. Look, air from atmosphere sucked into this region. Okay, this air is compressed using the uh, fans here. And then it goes to the combustion chamber here. This is the combustion chamber. We have a shaft which is rotating. Um, Okay, so here the spark ignition uh, uh, <coughs> plugs are uh, ignite both air and fuel together. Okay, then after it accelerates through this region and uh, exhausts out. So that is what you, you can observe here. Uh, these are the uh, 
compressors are here. Uh, there are also um, turbine here. Uh, this red color indicates the combustion chamber. So everything is just with simulation you can easily see. Is there any question on this? No. So, mm -hmm. necessarily the duct in the jet propulsion, exact uh, duct propulsion, I guess they are part of jet propulsion. Jet propulsion Give me the no. Still, they yeah. are jet propulsion. In difference, yeah, yeah, as I show you, working principle difference, you know, duct propulsion, air breathing engine, natural steel. A rocket propulsion, no, can not 100%, uh, not 100, but difference here, no, rocket propulsion, duct propulsion, jet. It is the class of jet propulsion. Again, yila yalu be misatwa cho specific energy be minora cho constructional future. They are different. So let's see. Man, I cho alu even this duct jet propulsion no cho classify si dera. Again, they tindo nu na ya cho alu now. So is it clear for you now? Yeah. Okay. okay. 